now before you die. Okay? Careful. A friend of mine was at a conference in 1993. He had a little book table doing his little books. Two guys walk up. I said, what are your books about? It's on the biblical worldview through sports and stuff. He said, okay. Started talking. And this guy said, well, I'm the agent of this guy. He said, and this guy here you haven't heard of yet, but you're going to hear about him, okay? Because he's going to change the way that we do church. And he said, his name is Rick Warren. Excuse me. Change the way that we do church? Church has been told how to do it right here. Church has been working just fine for 2,000 years, training up Christians to reach lost people. Okay, what do you mean change the way we do church? You don't change the way we do church. You do it God's way, is that correct? Careful, and how many churches? <laughs> have become so lukewarm. He wrote in his book, quote from his book, newest one. The Bible says, quote, in his book, there's 15 Bible translations in his book. 15. I asked a group of teenagers one time, why would anybody put 15 Bible translations in a book? First hand went up, young man, I said, yes, sir. He said, because you're trying to find something that fits what you want to say. Oh, my goodness. The, the teenage boys got it all figured out. Let me tell you something. I don't need to find something that fits what I want to say. I need to fit what? What God says. It's my job to fit his book, not find something that fits my opinion. In his book, he wrote, quote, the Bible says, one of these modern translations, he, God, rules everything and is everywhere and is in everything. He, God, rules everything, is everywhere and is in everything. God is in everything. What is that worldview called, folks? That's called pantheism. That's called panentheism, okay? A completely different worldview than you folks have, but yet we've just read this book over and over. God, our church is going through this book, and yet it teaches something biblically different. Let me tell you something. Be careful in the days to come. In one of my other talks, I warn people all the time, be very careful of people with microphones. And I'm telling you, watch out for me. Because you have no clue if I speak untruth unless you know the what? Truth. Where do you find it at? You got it here. Filter every speaker, every book back to this. If it agrees with it, keep listening. If it doesn't agree, get as far away as you can from that person. Okay? I'm doing a big conference in a couple weeks, a couple months, with this guy who's written a book that's real big with the, with the yuppie crowd and stuff. Okay? And so I, just, I read part of his book. I opened up the front, looked at his Bible translation. His Bible translation was what? Nothing. He had no verses in the entire book. That means it was the word of who? him. And yet it's one of the most popular books in Christianity today. He wrote in that book, quote, for me, the beginning of sharing my faith with people began by throwing out Christianity. This is a quote from this book, okay? And embracing Christian spirituality, a non-political, mysterious system that can, be ex that can be experienced but not explained. Excuse me, you can't explain Christianity. That's what God's Word does. I can explain Christianity when I witness. Is that correct? That's what we're supposed to be doing, okay? That is fabrication. That's a lie of the biggest thing at the end of days. Be careful. Title of books, your best life now. My best life now? I don't want my best life here. I want my best life there. Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die is what? Gain. Gain. I was at Mall of America witnessing yesterday 30 minute conversations with four teenagers. One boy had no money for food. So I, I already witnessed to him. I put a $20 bill on the table. I said, if you could have $20 or know exactly what it takes to go to heaven, I said, which one would you take? And that 17 year old boy, Kyle, sat there and was thinking and was thinking. And he said, I want the information it takes to go to heaven. I said, well, today's your lucky day. I said, you're going to get both of them. Okay? Because see, what I do is I take this money and I give it away. I give it to other people. I just keep giving ministry of money away. Why? Why not? That's what it's for. Is that correct? It's not for me. I don't need an IRA account. What are you going to do when you have all this money and you stand in front of the Lord Jesus Christ on Judgment Day? And it was for Bibles, for China, for missionaries. It was for gospel tracts. What are you going to do with that? You don't get a do-over. You don't get a mulligan. You don't get a second chance. You've got one shot at this life to do it exactly the way that God, the Lord God wants you to do it. Is that correct? That's correct. Are you meandering? Are you close to the four, five, and six? Or are you pushing on through that? Quote from that exact, need of nothing. Did you hear that? Have need of nothing. 
and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and need of nothing. Did you hear that? Have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Need of nothing. Self-delusion. Wait a minute. My Bible says your righteous acts are like what? Filthy rags. How can you be that self-deluded? I have need of nothing. I have need of a Savior. And follow and let him mold me into the man he wants me to be. That's what I need in the days to come. 